What you are about to see! Here in no particular order, not from smallest to biggest, not from best to worst, eight great giant monster movies. My name is Devin Faraci, and this is Badass Digest. I guess if we're gonna start any place, let's just start at the beginning. King Kong. Uh, King Kong isn't just maybe the best giant monster movie of all time, it's one of the best movies ever made. King Kong is an incredible experience, even today, watching uh, the sheer majesty of this creation, uh, the way Willis O'Brien was able to take this stop motion puppet and bring it to actual life as a character. King Kong is a movie that uh, influenced Ray Harryhausen, who would go on to become the greatest stop motion animator of all time, and would make some of the movies that are on this very list, but it also influenced the creators of Godzilla. And Godzilla, who was the king of the monsters, went on to uh, influence every single other Japanese giant monster movie that ever happened from there. It's just one of the great films. It's, it's fast, it's punchy. Peter Jackson remade the movie and added about an hour and a half of crap to it. I'm not really sure what the point was. Uh, coming in at about 90 minutes, King Kong is a perfect film. King Kong begat many films, and one of them was The Beast from 20,000 Fathoms. Uh, the Beast from 20,000 Fathoms is actually a movie that came out before Godzilla, but has a very similar concept. It's a movie where atomic testing awakens a creature from the depths of the ocean, or the Antarctic in this case. The creature's great, and the action is incredible. It's really violent. Uh, uh, this creature kicks a lot of ass. This is uh, the first movie that Ray Harryhausen sort of did on his own. The producers were forced to buy the rights to a Ray Bradbury story, uh, in order to make this film, because he had written a thing called The Foghorn, and it's really a riff on H.P. Lovecraft in a lot of ways, but it's got a giant sea monster coming out of the ocean and attacking a lighthouse. Um, and a very similar sequence happens in The Beast in 20,000 Fathoms, so rather than worry about copyright, they just bought the rights to the story. It's, it's, it's really fun, uh, and it's a film that went on to be one of the touchstones for all the giant monster movies that followed. If you're gonna have a list of eight great monster movies, well, clearly Godzilla's gotta be on that list. I mean, they don't call this guy the king of the monsters for nothing. What's kind of interesting is uh, the original Godzilla is not the movie that you might think it is. Godzilla over the years has taken on kind of a campy quality. The original Godzilla is actually a super grim, really heavy movie. Let's put it this way. It's about 10 years after the United States dropped two nuclear devices on Japan, and the Japanese people are making a movie about a nuclear monster attacking their cities. This is something that must have been unbelievably heavy for audiences in Japan to watch. The idea of an atomic monster who's breathing atomic fire and setting everything on fire, walking through Tokyo and destroying things. Godzilla's a parable. It's, a, it's one of these anti-atomic uh, power movies. Uh, Godzilla was supposed to be a stop-motion monster. Uh, Godzilla's big legacy is the creation of, of, of the Kai Kaiju man in suit genre, the idea of guys in big rubber suits stomping on miniaturized versions of Tokyo. Uh, but it works. There's, there's, there's a heaviness and a weight to Godzilla's movement that I think is incredible. La later films would go really cheap and get really crummy, but the original Godzilla is a, almost a gut punch of a movie. The atomic bomb was really freaking everybody out in the 50s. Uh, so the, you know, the Japanese had Godzilla, we had the beast in uh, the beast from 20,000 Fathoms, but I think the great atomic bomb uh, monster for me growing up, the ants and them. Uh, them is just a nutty movie where uh, irradiated ants grow to enormous size uh, and, and we can barely defeat them. Uh, the noise that the ants make in them is I think that if you're a young enough person and, and are exposed to this movie, that sound they make uh, is something that probably haunts your dreams to this very day. But there's nothing as weird as seeing a, a creature that we know on a smaller scale suddenly blown up to being large enough to destroy our buildings and eat us alive. Them is just the, the quintessential giant bug movie. All right, so let's have an argument here. Are dinosaurs giant monsters? I don't know. I mean, uh, what if you had a dinosaur and you had him fighting cowboys? That is the premise of the Valley of Guanji, uh, one of the strangest and, and most fun giant monster movies of all time. This is another Ray Harryhausen film, uh, and basically it's about a bunch of cowboys who uh, come across a T-Rex. Uh, I mean, what else do you have to say? Uh, this is just one of those strange movies that could only pop up in this weird period of time when they were just making all kinds of odd films to run as the second feature to drive in. And this is a perfect second feature to drive in. Giant monsters fell out of favor for a long time. Uh, it wasn't until the 80s that one of the uh, great all-time giant monster movies was made uh, that almost nobody's seen. It's a film called Q the Winged Serpent. Uh, Q the Winged Serpent is about uh, a world where the uh, Aztec god Quetzalcoatl, 
uh, who is a giant winged lizard, uh, shows up in New York City, nests in the Chrysler building, and just begins biting the heads off topless ladies on New York City's rooftops. Uh, it's it's awesome. Uh, and there's a lot, a lot of really great stuff going on in this movie. Uh, Q itself is, I think, one of the last great stop motion uh, creatures. Uh, watching uh, this monster fly against the backdrop of a rear projected New York City is a lot of fun. Larry Cohen really got New York City. This is a great New York City film. And then there's a lead performance by Michael Moriarty, who some people might maybe last know from his work in Law & Order, is one of our great crazy actors. Uh, Michael Moriarty is an actual lunatic in real life, it seems like. He has some pretty crazy views. You can look him up online. But on screen, he is radiating insanity in every frame. He is like Nick Cage if Nick Cage is on meth all the time. Uh, uh, I love watching Michael Moriarty in a movie. And this movie, where he's a guy who has to deal with a giant flying lizard and is losing his mind about it, is I think probably the pinnacle of Michael Moriarty's career. All right, so I've been leaning a little heavy on American films on this list so far, I get it. I mean, uh, I've kind of left off most of the Japanese kaiju. I could include movies like Destroy All Monsters, which is a really wonderful, just giant monster wrestling match. Uh, but I'd rather go for something, uh, a foreign film that's uh, a little classier and maybe a little better put together. Uh, Bong Joon-ho's The Host. Uh, the Host is a really amazing South Korean movie uh, about a giant monster that is created when uh, American GIs on a military base carelessly throw chemicals into the sewer, uh, which puts it really in line with, I think, the best giant monster movies, which is a movie where the giant monster comes from mankind's uh, own hubris and, and, and attempts to conquer science. The thing I like about The Host is maybe the thing that some people have a problem with in Korean cinema in general. The movie's all over the place in terms of tone. It can go from being really scary, to being really funny, to being really sad, to being really silly, all within about 15 minutes. Uh, you can stand that kind of whiplash. The Host is an incredible experience that has a, a, a terrific ending, uh, some really great uh, monster sequences uh, that are a smaller scale. Uh, it, it's, it's a lot of fun. There's a sequel to The Host uh, that's kind of been percolating. I don't really know what's happening with it. Uh, Bong Joon-ho is not making the sequel. And if anything, I think The Host is a pretty delightful one and done monster movie. So giant monsters have been kind of coming back. This summer, Pacific Rim has a movie with like seven or eight different giant monsters. They're called Kaiju in honor of the Japanese giant monsters. Next summer, the King of the Monsters himself is returning in another remake of Godzilla. The guy who's directing Godzilla's remake, Gareth Edwards, uh, has already made a giant monster movie all of his own. And it's a giant monster movie that probably almost none of you guys have seen. It's a movie called Monsters. And it's kind of, what if we took an indie romance and set it against the backdrop of a world where giant monsters have invaded. What's amazing about Monsters is that it's a super low budget movie. Gareth Edwards did the effects himself on his MacBook at home. That means that he has the monsters operating in a very different way. While the rest of the monster movies on this list have been movies where the monster is front and center, Monsters is a terrific movie because of the way that it keeps its Lovecraftian creations just off to the side. When they finally do show up, it's pretty great. Uh, and I love the way that Gareth Edwards was able to take a, a really kind of a played out genre and inject a humanity into it. Usually I don't want to see the romance in a monster movie. I don't care about what's happening on the ground in Godzilla. But in Monsters, I care so much about these characters and their journey and their relationship that uh, I actually feel bad when the monsters show up and start screwing everything up. Uh, and I think that having seen Monsters, which is a movie that you should seek out immediately, uh, you'll realize that Godzilla is in incredible hands. So those are my eight great giant monster movies. What are some of the monster movies that you uh, would have put on a list? Let me know in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss a single episode going forward. Please share this episode with your friends, loved ones, teachers, bosses, your garbage man on Facebook, on Twitter. Get it out there everywhere. Just spread the word uh, like, like monster blood all over the landscape. My name is Devin Faraci, and this is Badass Digest. I saw this as a kid in the theater, which means an adult took me. Right. And they hated it. Right. And they didn't just get up and go like, F this. Get your film fix. Subscribe to Cinefix.